hundreds of years of naval tradition. Until recently, in both times of war and peace, it was a thriving center of industry. A city within a city, and according to the history books, older and some argue, more important than its near neighbor presence. Do you see Pembroke Street in a minute in all its glory? Devonport had more churches and bigger congregations, often with links which reflected its naval heritage. Church, community, and navy were closely tied, and as it turned out in many ways, so were their fortunes. St. Albans has from any pain or sorrow or anger that has been brought here in the past. Today in Devonport, the church continues its work. It's helping a community face up to problems which in some areas have become so severe, it's said they've reawoken the spirit of true evil, requiring the services of another arm of the church, its exorcism. We declare the victory of Christ over suffering, sin and death. We declare his peace to all who live here. May the blessing of God be here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. The church is facing an uphill struggle in trying to improve people's everyday lives. One area of Devonport recently gained the unhappy distinction of being named the most deprived in the country. A conclusion based on a series of statistics which included unemployment, poor housing, and social needs. The problems of Devonport are so bad, there's no single answer or solution. I think there are three main problems facing Devonport. First of all, and I suppose the major one, is that of finding employment for the great majority of people. I don't know the exact unemployment figures in Plymouth, in Devonport at the moment, but I suspect that they're about 30%, plus or minus a bit. Um, and that's very demoralizing and debilitating for the society and people at large. I know there's been an enormous input of money um, by government uh, and quangos into Devonport to do job training and that sort of thing. But it's a bit artificial and unhelpful so well, to train that's people when the so bad. without actually finding them work to do uh, when they finish their training. Secondly, I think for 300 years the dockyard has been the mainstay of Plymouth, the mainstay of many people's lives. They, they gave up better paid jobs Temple to dockyard. work in the security that the dockyard provides. And now, over the last 25 years, the numbers have changed from about 25,000 people to work in the yard to about less than five. But I think the, the third problem that Devonport has to, to face up to is a mind change, that we're no longer going to be a principal dockyard for HM forces, for, our, for the Royal Navy. Um, the Royal Navy is getting smaller, uh, its purpose is ill-defined, perhaps, um, and that sort of security is not going to be there anymore. Devonport? is arguably paying the price for relying almost totally on the Royal Navy and its dockyard to support its inhabitants. But the days of full employment, training and apprenticeships have long gone. With the jobs have gone dozens of trades and a host of skills never to be rekindled. Where still, there's nothing to replace them. Certainly not for the next generation of job seekers the youngsters in the community. It would be totally simplistic to answer the whole problems of society by saying you want work. But I really have a, a, a strong belief that to provide people with fulfilling occupation is going to resolve quite a lot of problems uh, in inverted commas that young people uh, are, are supposed to cause. I'm not totally convinced that they actually do. Uh, if you have got nothing for young people in a community uh, other than to allow them to stand on a street corner, you're going to have trouble. There's been a 
another night of disturbances in Devonport. Cars were set alight and several other fires started. Oh, nice. Windows were broken and a number of properties and damage is estimated to run into many Can't thousands of pounds. There's been a number of previous incidents. Oh. Added to its other problems, the last thing that Devonport needed was scenes like these. Almost nightly, uh, rampages of destruction which left their mark on everyone living there. Very few people had a good word to say for the place, except oh, that the kiddo days. for many who continued to live there. It was frightening sometimes. Karen. I mean, you were going, going through Pembroke Street. It was about 40 police coming through here one night. You can tell Karen. I mean, we, we were looking to see what was going on. But it, it could be frightening. I think a lot of it was to do that. They were out of work and they were bored. And that was their way of having their fun. But nothing might put it that way. Here we go. Maureen Thorpe is one of Devonport's greatest. Look at me in my streets. Living close to her daughter's <laughs> Tracy and Michelle, she believes the city has been born. <laughs> with new homes starting to replace the older houses, which once stood where she now lives and remembers as a child. I used to get my um, presents a week every Thursday. Both my granddad. And I used to do little babies washing downstairs for half a crown. But we didn't need money. We used to just go out yeah. and, you know, have a good time. But now, if you send the kids to the shop, they got ten p. It's not going to buy anything. I'll have coffee, please. Oh, I'll have coffee, Michelle. Maureen's daughters are split when it comes to sharing their mother's optimism. Who's out tomorrow night, then? Oh, eight of us. Michelle so. wants to leave the airport. While Tracy is as happy as her mother about staying. All three, though, agree on the roots of many of the city's problems. You never read in the paper anything good that's happened in Dunbar. It's always the bad side. I mean, a few lads won it a couple of months ago. Some lady broke down off the top there. And they stopped, uh, they pushed their car. But yeah. that wasn't in the paper. Now, if they'd mugged her, well, you're not working in the paper, paper. Right away. There's a lot of good things that go on in it, but you just don't hear about it. When I was a teenager, I was a lot happier than what they are now. Because I said there was more to do. So we used to go up the boxing club. The sister looks like Lady Dyer. That's the club Street. We need boxing. But we used to follow them all right. Then we used to get into any trouble. Because you, your mind was occupied all the time. They've had a few youth clubs, but like the older kids have ruined it. The Johnson Hall, they burnt down. One well, of that was over the lane. Yeah. They burnt that down. That was there for donkey's years. They see them walking around now, don't you, night times? And the one outside the pub. We never had that. Yeah, no, we want nothing when I was a teenager. We want nothing. Well, I don't know what you know what I used to get up to, really, did I? <laughs> 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 well, I've true. moved out three times, and three times I've moved back. I got it on the states, but no. I've just got it in my blood, haven't I? I wouldn't move out. Even if I wanted some money, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. No, it's not coming down for it. It's worse than any other place. I love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, if anyone wants it down their mouth, then apples, bananas. You know, you live there first, and then you judge it. You know, you judge it. But someone's out never even been here. They'll sit there and they'll run it down. Pink flats, eh? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> While the city council and others have performed near miracles in replacing some of Devonport's yes. worst housing, Roots. many examples still remain. When added to over 30% or even higher unemployment, the problems many people face are compounded to a point where only the efforts of one of the church's least known figures can offer any help or comfort. The church refers to its exorcist as the deliverance officer. A man whose work is to free buildings from the effects of evil forces, spirits, ghosts, and poltergeists. A place like Devonport, I think, has a, a history, no doubt, of a couple of hundred years of, of being an area of poverty, uh, where people have built up uh, a lot of pain in, in houses, houses where people have suffered, have struggled. I think that kind of place is going to develop a certain excess of, of pain and of woundedness, uh, in which the prayer of blessing and the prayer indeed of deliverance may well be needed. But there is a, 
Fuck the kids. <laughs> Sometimes a feeling that in the late well, 20th century we don't need to have things like exorcisms or um, prayer for the deliverance of a house from evil spirits. And I, to be fair, I would have thought that myself at one stage, but experience during my last 20 years of ministry have made me realise that there are times when that kind of language is as appropriate as any other that I can think of. I'm involved in all kinds of situations. Um, sometimes there's the, the classic case of the poltergeist oh, being seen thrown around in a house. Um, some of which are quite bizarre. People being hit on the back of the head with a loaf of bread that's thrown across the kitchen by an unseen hand, as it were. There are cases where there seems to be a, a what people call a ghost, a haunting. Sometimes there are cases of something which feels quite unpleasant, almost evil, uh, where there needs to be cleansing or a deliverance. On the bank holiday Monday, I came down early to make a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And you know, you said mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. you walk in somewhere and you, you said there's mm -hmm. something wrong, but you don't mm -hmm. know what it is. A fridge, the freezer, it's all unplugged. Mm -hmm. But then the bigger things, like the front bedroom, I went in there one day, there's a big bookcase full of the books. Mm -hmm. The books were scattered everywhere. And you've been to mediums a number of times, have you? Well, not a number, not really. There's no mediums in the house there, have you? Have you oh, met anybody in here? Oh, no, no. I don't get involved with that very much. Well, I actually think probably the best thing would be is if, if I said some prayers in each of the rooms and we'd be use some holy water for blessing. Yeah. And uh, hopefully that will make things easier. Yeah. Lord, bring your peace into this place, and this will be protected and blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes the place itself has a history of pain. Um, in other cases, it seems to me that the people living in the house have brought in either their own uh, burdens of, of pain or anxiety, or their own involvement in our activity. It's a bit like when you do building work in a house, you stir up the dust. And sometimes people coming into a house with their own pains and problems stir up atmospheres and memories from the past. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this womb and never to return. I send you to the cross of Jesus for him to be brought over you. And may this womb be blessed, cleansed and protected in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You often see the, the sheer relief come over somebody's face when you tell them uh, that I've experienced this kind of thing elsewhere, and they're not the first person um, in the world, or, or indeed the first person in Devonport, uh, who's had a problem with noises in their house, with a sense of, of fear or foreboding, um, or just with a whole um, feeling of sadness in their, in their home. But it's interesting that there's still sufficient residual uh, faith or sense of Christianity in the country, that very often in times of crisis, people will actually turn yeah. to the church. And I think probably the clergy in areas like Devonport will often find that they're being approached by people who wouldn't normally go near the church or indeed near a vicar, um, but who, who sense that that's here is a person um, who might be able to help them or put them in touch with the person who can. I always like to work with the local parish priest if I can, uh, because they know the area, they know the people, and they can do the preparation and the follow-up. I don't like just coming in as the, you know, the man from um, the ministry or, or the expert from, um, from the diocese who comes to, to deal with these things. It's not a matter of, of magic, but bringing in the peace that the, the Christian faith offers us. In Devonport, with newer housing and the efforts of numerous agencies, many have found peace. But the lack of real jobs bites hard into any community. And without work, especially for the young, the twin evils of crime and drugs are not far away. And the problems go deeper. <coughs> With Devonport's reputation, simple things like finding credit to buy furniture and insurance for homes and possessions are hard to come by. Time after time, She's the accusing finger points at the Navy and the doctor. In its heyday, it helped provide a commercial heart for a thriving community. But then the jobs and the security they provided were all but taken away. The most important thing that Devonport needs 
is for people to be employed preferably in paid employment and in proper jobs and we have to be very careful that any training that this organization or any of the agencies in devonport gets involved in is training that will issue in real uh, qualifications for real jobs and what we're keen to do is to assist the process of, cre of creating homegrown businesses community businesses where local people can gain employment where they can gain training that is um, uh, relevant to their needs um, and where we can set up a model of business that inspires other local people to say, well, I'm, I'd like to have a go at that. Um, we're not expecting that in the next year or two, Devonport will receive a great uh, sort of um, improvement from the outside of companies suddenly coming here and employing people. Uh, that may happen in the longer term. What we want to do is to see what capacity there is within the community for people running with their own ideas, creating their own employment opportunities, and even creating their own businesses. Most people here in this community um, have suffered from uh, repeated lack of opportunities in employment. So we are um, all the time suffering from constant low income, debt, um, historically um, poor housing has been a problem, although there are many initiatives now which have dramatically improved uh, certain streets in our area. Um, but really, it's the whole area of low income and debt uh, that people struggle with more than anything else. Okay. See what Jim's doing. He's using the tip of his fingers. Can I show you? You lift it up like that. See? And then just use your tippy, tip, tippy fingers like that. Makes it all nice and smooth. Peter Jones and his wife, Trisha, work away from the normal surroundings of the church, running a number of schemes. Among them, a specially built training pitches. They're trying to rebuild the basic pillars of family life, teaching both adults and teenagers the lost art of home cooking. I think for those people who accidentally uh, happen to get involved with what we do, um, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and uh, they can see that we're not in the business of coming to do good to people or to make people do things. Uh, we are in the business of trying to support uh, what local people feel is important. So we set up uh, a Get Cooking scheme, which enables um, young adults and students at school uh, to come and learn basic techniques. And that not only um, provides obvious skills that they need, but it also instills a sense of confidence. We start with small and beautiful. That's, that's the real principle. And then trans translate that, take it away, replicate it elsewhere, uh, so that small groups of people start running with the same model. And then they gain confidence, and therefore the battle can be won. There's no reason why not. naval heritage and seagoing traditions, many would find it amazing just how few of Devonport's children actually get to enjoy and learn about the famous waterway on their doorstep. That too, thanks to another church initiative, is now starting to change with a special scheme to get local youngsters onto the water. That, after all, many argue, is their basic right. This is their heritage. Uh, it a lot of the kids that you see today go on the Torquoise Ferry to treat. Now, there's got to be something wrong with that. You've got the finest marine waterway of any European, major European city, without a doubt. The tragedy is that most of the kids you see today live in areas where it's inaccessible to them. I think Horizons, um, the boat project, has an awful lot to offer in giving youngsters the kind of confidence to believe in themselves and to feel that they've got things to say and do that will maintain the trend of the improvements that Devonport is witnessing today. So what we're doing here is getting hold of youngsters and teaching them to have fun 
in a way that's creative, in a way that helps them to discover themselves and relate to each other, and bring out a sense of camaraderie that, that probably was commonplace in the 30s and 40s in my dad's generation, but is elusive today. And while the pleasures of sailing and boating are easy to see and appreciate, the youngsters are not just out for a trip on the water. There are many lessons to be learned, not least among them basic sea craft, safety, and like the true sailors of Devonport's founding generations, knowing how to tie a knot. Alex, I'll tie you to mine. I'm coming home now. You just have to pull out. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> these youngsters with a much needed job in a few years time but it's hard to imagine how they won't benefit from such experiences if only to appreciate and pass on to others the practical knowledge and beauty of the waterway which gave birth to Devonport in the first place too much on problems. Yes, there are croaks, yes, there's violence. In my parish, there are 26 pubs with no doctor's surgery. That can't be right. And what does that say to a mum who moves in with her kids uh, about how much the society cares for her and her needs? And you could say that's very bleak. But it's changing. And it's changing because people are talking to each other a lot more. We're all realising that, that we can't make a profit in a vacuum. And unless we invest in people, at a very early age, then the problems won't only persist, but they will actually increase. And, uh, uh, you know, our society will deteriorate, and, and who knows what will happen. But I don't see that here. I see lots of room for optimism. Today's community back from the edge. 